SEC title game, probably the most anticipated. It always is Georgia versus Alabama here. I think that that's what the fans want to see. And the point spread indicates it should be a fairly close game, right? Georgia anywhere from five to six points bouncing around this week a little bit. A um, couple of things here. Uh, neither one of these teams, in my estimation, is vintage defensively all around. The possibility for points, and even as we speak here doing this show, the total has been hit back up a little bit. It opened 56, went down to 53. I see 54s as we record here for this show. Um, indoors, perfect conditions. There's so many ways to look at it, though. I find myself bouncing back and forth whether or not I think it will be an over or under. I probably lean a little bit more towards over. Let's start with some stats that probably go really unnoticed here. Um, I want to start with one that I keep for myself, which I call negative plays. They're for the offense, offensive negative plays. They consist of penalties, turnovers, sacks allowed, and punts. In the case of Georgia, they're extremely good at limiting this quartet of negative plays. In five of their last six games, now remember, there's four categories here. Penalties, turnovers, sacks allowed, and punts. In five of the last six games, Georgia's numbers total where these categories are concerned, 8, 5, 11, 7, 6, and 9. So five times in their last six games, all four of those categories added up have been less than 10 where Georgia is concerned. They're just not hurting themselves. Their quarterback does not get sacked. I think that uh, Carson Beck has been sacked 10 times in 399 pass attempts. That's once every 39.9. 40 pass attempts before you get to this guy. Very, very good offensive line pass protection. Not turning the ball over, not committing any penalties, not punting the football. Reason why I bring that up is because when you look at the Alabama side, it's far different. Alabama's only had games where they had negative play total under 10 three times all year. And in fact, if you add them up on a season basis for Georgia, they've had 102 total negative plays. Alabama, 172. That's minus 70 for Alabama in there. And, and if you're looking at a game that you think is going to be played real close, one of these four categories is bound to affect it. A penalty, a turnover, a key sack, or a punt. Um, so certainly that favors the Georgia side. Another thing here that might favor the Georgia side is that they just don't allow explosive touchdown plays. And what we've seen out of Alabama in their four-week rise or four-game rise the last four weeks offensively has been a lot of big plays. For Georgia, they've only allowed touchdowns outside the red zone six times all year. Alabama scored 20, and in fact, eight in their last four games. Jalen Milrose legs, Jalen Milrose deep ball. Um, the last four opponents Alabama played, not so great, so maybe that's got something to do with the increase in explosive touchdown plays for them. But Georgia limits you. They're going to make you use the field. We'll see if Alabama can do so. I think if you're looking for weaknesses in the Georgia Bulldogs, it's not often brought up, but their run defense hasn't been great this year. Um, for Georgia, if you just use standard metrics, they're allowing four yards per carry. But if you go ahead and weed out the sack yardage, because it's been a very good quarterback sack team. If you go ahead and weed that out, you'll find that they've allowed in the last five games of the season, 5.46 yards per rushing attempt. That's a lot of rushing yards. And the last five teams they played this year are the five best offenses they played all season long. Their first seven games were lousy offenses. Last five very good offenses. Teams ran the ball for about 5-5 five, five a carry. So Alabama, when you figure in Milrow's ability to run, Maybe they can run the football here. I think a couple of questions come into play. A, can Georgia's defense get to Jalen Milrow? He's been sacked 39 times um, despite the fact that he's so mobile. And I just brought up the fact that Carson Beck's only been sacked 10. If Georgia can get to Milrow, force him out of a comfort zone, it's going to be a nice day for the Georgia Bulldogs. And then the second thing for me is that I just don't know that Alabama's defense won't get carved up by Georgia. And the return of Brock Bowers, as soon as he came back, the very first game he was back, they gained 661 total yards. They have too many weapons at too many levels. They played without some star wide receivers uh, receivers last week, including Lad McConkey. Everybody figures to be back here. 
Not sure that Alabama can keep up. So for from a side perspective, I would probably look at Georgia in this game. From a totals perspective, I still think I lean a little more towards over 54. I can see Georgia getting up and over 30 points. And as I mentioned, their run defense hasn't been that great, and maybe Alabama can capitalize. I just don't think they can score enough to keep up. So I'd probably be looking at Georgia minus and the total up and over 54. Hey, guys, uh, SEC championship game here. You just heard there from Rob Vino, and I agree with him. I think this uh, total hitting at uh, 54, I could see Georgia carving up uh, Alabama's defense. And I do think Alabama will be able to uh, hit some big plays. But coming back to, you know, Alabama going up against Auburn just this this past week, they're facing a lot better defense here in Georgia. And to tell you the truth, a lot better offense as well in the Georgia Bulldogs. We get Kirby Smart versus his uh, his old boss and Nick Saban going at it in Atlanta. I don't think that will favor the, the Bulldogs all that much. But just going back, what, 27 in a row now for the Georgia Bulldogs. This is one of the best runs, um, really, of my lifetime in, in college football. And Georgia getting healthier now. You know, Brock Bowers uh, likely, you know, uh, going to be one of the better tight ends in the NFL. I think he... He puts a, a staple on this game. I think he gets involved in a big way. Plus, guys, bring up the 27-0. and 0, But even something a little bit more appealing to my eyes, when Georgia gets into the SEC championship game, just last year they beat LSU and they put 50 points up on the board. It's a controlled climate there in downtown Atlanta. Also, the last two playoff games, if you remember, they really ran up the score. They're averaging more than 50 points in those games. They put up 65 against TCU. This offense, when the lights come on, when it's big-time matchups, man, with all that NFL talent, he's recruiting there to Athens, Georgia, a great college football town. I think Georgia's really going to pile on some points, and I think that correlates towards the over. And I actually think Georgia covers, we're getting a, a, a number as low as five out there available, minus five on the Georgia Bulldogs, five and a half at a lot of shops. I think Georgia wins by more than a touchdown, guys. So overall, give me the Georgia Bulldogs as my best bet. And uh, to Rob Vino's point, I think uh, we're going to see more points than just the mid-50s. So if you like betting totals, I'd go towards the over. But give me the dogs minus the points.